Hi, I'm Lewis, reporting for Waffle TV, and I'm here with Stephen Carlin, who has his show Pandas vs Penguins, which is on at the Pleasance Courtyard from the 6th to the 27th of August at 6pm. Hello. Stephen, how's it going? I'm very well, thank you. It's a pleasure. How are you? I'm very well. I see you've been rained on a little bit today. Yes, I have. I have been rained on. I, I, I've got the genius of having an umbrella that's smaller than me. <laughs> it's, it's got a very small radius. Um, so I, my head is dry, but almost the rest of me is wet. Um, well, the head is the most important bit. Obviously, you need to keep this dry. You're, I'm very impressed with your beard, beard that you're it, cultivating. It does. Well, I, I, I got into beards to, to be lazy and save time from shaving, but actually I found out they're more maintenance now than if I just shaved every day. They, they become a... I mean, you've got a bit of... You've got a, a proto-beard. Oh, because. nothing nothing compared to... <laughs> So the, this is, I, I bow down to your expertise. Well, the, the, the festival's quite young at the moment. We've got about three weeks to run, and who knows what your beer will be doing by the end of it. You could have rare birds nesting in it. I mean, <laughs> is that an ambition of yours to... Yeah, yeah, I've actually got a one-man show about growing a beard, so... Protect wildlife, endangered species in, in my beard. That's next year's show, I think. <laughs> I'm going to stick with the, the animal theme. We've got pandas are endangered, but next year, endangered birds. <laughs> in, the, in my beard. So tell us a bit about your show, Pandas vs Penguins. Um, well, it's, uh, it's about how everybody is either a panda person or a penguin person. So I'm trying to unleash the inner penguin or inner panda within all of us. Uh, I, I think I'm basically sowing seeds of conflict in, in people, but I'm just saying, like, let's, let's not argue on if you're male or female, if you're Scottish or English, black or white, let's, let's, let's say, are <laughs> let's you a panda person or a penguin person? The important questions. Yeah, let's not have uh, men and women's toilets, let's have panda and penguin toilets. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the way forward. So, so what are the characteristics of panda? What sort of pandas? Uh, pandas, sedentary, um, bad work ethic, I would say, quite lazy, self-indulgent, um, they okay. like to be stuff on a plate, um, not getting out of the comfort zone in terms of sex, there's no sex, whereas, whereas penguins are very dirty sex-wise. I mean, there was, they published a thing um, from Scott of the Antarctic, but it, it's not been published for like a hundred years because it was about how dirty the penguins were. There was in necrophilia and everything going on there. In fact, it was written in Greek, because I don't know that's why I made it scientific, <laughs> but he didn't want to write it in English. It was just so that only people who had been to Oxbridge could, could read about the dirty penguins. So they're a lot more sexually active and a bit more street, I think, penguins. A bit more street? Yeah. Gangster penguins? I think so. I think out of the two, they'd be more likely to, to run a protection racket. <laughs> Fair enough. Would you describe yourself as a panda or a penguin? Um, I wouldn't like to say because I think that, that, that comes up in the show and I don't want to okay. um, use all my gunpowder. <laughs> I, want to, I want to leave something hanging. You know, people going, oh, I, want, <laughs> I wonder what it is. Um, so yeah, that, I mean, that is one of the big secrets, isn't it? Of life. Am I, am I a panda or a penguin? Well, you've made me wonder now. I mean, no. am I a, would you, what would you say? Just initial thoughts, panda or a penguin? Um, I don't know if I know you well enough. I mean, the fact that you you're on your own, I would think I would just think panda. Panda. Panda, a bit more individualistic, maybe. No, not a group person. But I don't know. Maybe you maybe you go about in the evening in a big posse. <laughs> do, you, do you have a posse? A posse of other gangsters. Well, I need a posse actually. I don't have a posse. We can start a posse. Yeah, yeah. What should we call our posse? Um. Oh, I see. It's got to be something gangster. This, this, I'm showing probably my lack of gangster credentials. <laughs> I was immediately thinking the tart and something, and I don't know, like a sort of twee, um, sh quaint, um, touristy thing. Like a uh, walking tour sort of thing. We could do a walking tour. Could we use rock in it? Because there's a sort of Edinburgh rock can sound hard, and there's sort of an Edin Edinburgh rock, the sweet, and also the the mountains, uh, the castle. I like it. So you are from Scotland originally. That's right. As yeah. we can tell by your accent. Yeah. Do you uh, find it like it's coming home when you come to the fringe? Yeah, very much so. I, I think for some fringe performers they get a little homesick, um, but it's easier for me because I, 
uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming home. Um, with, with all the advantages and disadvantages. <laughs> so, you know, good in general, but then you get somebody going, I, I was at school with you, <laughs> I was at school with your brother, which is more common, and I'm like, okay. Because <laughs> there's quite a gap between my, me and my younger brother, so we were never at school together, so I don't know any, anybody that he was at school with. So it's, um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a home from home. I know, I know all the, uh, the haunts, all the, uh, the pubs, all the, the best haggis suppers. Yeah, it's inside of knowledge, <laughs> and it's available for a price. <laughs> so, do you do you come to the fringe as a child? No, um, it's that typical thing, isn't it? When it's on your doorstep, you don't support it as much. Then I moved to London. Before I did stand up, I lived in London. Then I started coming up here to the fringe just to watch. Um, the first, I, the first time I, I, I went to the fringe was quite recently, 1999, I think. I came to see. Some friends were in a play. Um, I, I came to see it, and I remember seeing S Stephen Frost. You know, Stephen used to do "Whose Line Is It Anyway?" back in the day. Been very excited that somebody that had been on the TV was in the street in Edinburgh. Because you don't get a lot of celebrities up here outside of the festival. It's not like London where there's famous people walking about the streets. I just seen Stephen Frost getting out of a cab and thought, you know what? This is this is where it happens. <laughs> <in the fringe." laughs> <laughs> um, on your website, you say mm -hmm. that you claim you invented the mockumentary. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit about that? Um, yeah, I mean, I passed. I, I was like rearing to pass my test driving wise when I was a kid. I mean, as soon as I was seventeen, I, I got my license. And my brother and I, we got in the car. We drove about. I just got my test, and he. We got a dictaphone, like a cassette one, and, and we recorded this sort of thing as if I was a, a cab driver. Um, it wasn't before Spinal Tap though. I've now found out that they sort of did it first. Uh, well, they sort of simultaneously had the same idea before me and made it better um, and got it out there publicly. So in that sense, they, they got there first. But it, I don't know. I was really into that sort of naturalistic style when I was sort of in a teenager. That naturalistic style of uh, comedy that obviously is now. Quite common, um, and it's, I remember when The Office came out, people was going, "Oh, The Office!" I was like, "Yeah, but I sort of <laughs> could have had that idea 15 years ago <laughs> and didn't." <laughs> um, yeah, but I think I just reflected my, my my taste at the time, which was, which was quite sort of naturalistic stuff. Do you think you'll return to sort of like writing in the future? Yeah, well, I'm hoping to uh, to, to to do something about Scottish independence because 2014 is the, the, the referendum. On Scottish independence. So now that the Olympics are almost finished, it's the next big thing uh, in Britain. It's uh, the referendum. So I'd, I'd like to do something on that. Um, so, so watch this space. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, anybody out there with two million pounds budget, you're just pulling a hole in the pocket. <laughs> things. I'd love to give that to Stephen Carlin. Um, get in touch through the website. <laughs> Well, thank you. This has been great. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to meet you. And once again, Stephen Carlin will be on at the Pleasant's Courtyard from the 6th to the 27th of August at 6pm. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much.